check out the old grader I've got my eye on. 3,460 New Zealand dollars, that's not bad. So let's go and have a look at it. Alright, the parts have arrived. Let's have a look at that train. Looks pretty good quality. I didn't expect all the links to have uh, cotopins through them though. Um, but they're all press fit, so they should stay together. There's the uh, joining link. That should be easy enough to put on. And I've got the, the filters, transmission filter and the hydraulic filter they look about right so we'll try and get that chain in first of all so let's get into it Okay, that's the chain around the drive sprocket. There's going to be quite a bit left over, so um, I'll have to I'll have to break a link somewhere around there, probably. That feels pretty good. So I've got to take. Get that link out there. Drop it. Yeah. That's the chain on. Now all I have to do is take that slack out of it. There should be three quarters of an inch of slack there at that. Uh, inspection hatch and there's more like probably two inches there so I'll just turn this hub around and see if I can tighten it up a bit much better that's the bottom out there so that's only one inch of slack now. I'm happy with that. So I'll run it like that on the blocks for a wee while and uh, make sure it's not binding up. I'll put, put a few, few more of these bolts in and if it doesn't bind up or anything, I'll leave it at that. Before I start the engine, I've got to replace those filters I took out last time. The hydraulic and the transmission filter. Someone made a comment on the last video that I should put a magnet in there just to catch any uh, roaming pieces of metal. So I've got this Neo magnet. So I'm going to put that in the bottom, and that should catch any uh, bits of metal floating around. 
they'll just stick to that instead of going into the filter and the spring will go over top of that perfect put some clean oil on that new seal More choke that would have started. That filter is on the outlet side of the pump, the high pressure side. That's why I didn't fill it with hydraulic oil when I put it back on because the air will purge out of that straight away. If that had been on the intake side, I would have filled the filter bowl up with hydraulic oil so I didn't get air going through the pump. Looks pretty good. Put another Neo magnet into the transmission filter. Slide it right down the bottom. Okay, so that's the transmission and hydraulic filters done. All the oil's changed, so I'm going to give it a wee run now and just see how that chain looks. I haven't filled it up with oil yet, but I'll just pour some over it as it's rolling. all going around pretty well so uh, I'll back those bolts off put some sealant around that hub and then do that back up because I'm pretty happy with that I think Alright, I've snugged all those bolts up. I haven't done them right up to the full torque. I want to let that sealant dry for a few hours and then I'll just um, torque them up and that creates a bit of compression in the seal. See that the sealant is squeezed out of all the gaps, so that means it's evenly spread out around the mating surface. Uh, I think that'll keep the oil in and the, the rain out. So I'll put some oil in there now. The manual says it takes four gallons, so that's approximately 15 litres. Quite a bit of oil on there. I suppose it's just it's just going to fill the bottom of it up. So every time the train goes around, it spreads it around the sprockets, and I'm guessing it drips down into that bearing as well. That's probably how that stays lubricated. Just 
put a temporary cover on there so I can see what's going on and um, if I hear any funny noises or feel like it's binding up I'll just have a look in there and uh, make sure that chain is still where it should be that sealant is set now so I'll torque up these bolts Check the tension of this uh, rear chain. That feels like about one inch. About the same as the other one. Perfect actually. It's nice and tight that one. Probably around about three quarters of an inch. Those teeth feel perfect. Alright, so these old gaskets that I took off are pretty buggered. You can see they're um, probably like 50 years old or something. And uh, falling apart. So I've cleaned all that up with a chisel just to get all the old gasket and rust off there. And um, I'm just going to put some silicon gasket spread nice and thickly on there so that'll fill up any uh, gaps. and. Should do a good job of keeping the water out. And lucky last. That chain feels not too bad. That's about one and a half inches movement. So that's all the chains at a fairly good tension, I think. So I'll take it for a wee test run and see if that chain stays on the sprocket. Alright, that chain stayed on, no problems. Didn't feel it binding up or anything. I'll change the oil in the right hand tandem case now. Looks like a, a rusty soup in there, so we'll get that out. So there's water getting in somewhere, I'm guessing maybe through the seal, it doesn't look too good. That's quite thick oil, so I'll just let that drain out overnight. Most of it should be out in the morning. There doesn't seem to be a lot of uh, crud in it like the other side, because uh, obviously a chain hasn't been chewed up on this side, so I won't worry about trying to scrape out the bottom of it, because it's just too tricky to get in there. But next time I take this hub off, I'll give it a good clean out, because this chain is going to need tensioning before too long, I think. I think I can see where the, the water's been leaking in. You can see there's a bit of rust on this uh, ceiling surface, so I'll give that a good clean up with the grinder. Right, that's down to bare metal. That should seal up a bit better. Might as well start greasing some nipples. There's going to be quite a few of them. There must be a, like 50 or so.
Alright, that's all the hydraulic pivots done. Um, there's a few there I'll have to take out and clean out or replace. And I'll do those kingpins as well. Oil and the kingpins. Um, now I've just got to do this drive shaft. There's a few around here. Sometimes there's, there's something around the, the fan area, but I can't see one on this. I don't know much about the Leyland 401. It's the first time I've ever had one. I used about one and a half cartridges for all those grease points. Ah, what's that? There's two grease points. Alright. Oh. Use some high temperature grease on that. So those diesel filters need need changing. I've been there for a few years by the look of them. Unfortunately I only have one on me so I'll just do the, the first one in line and order another one. Um, so it looks like comes up there, that'll be the first one so I'll change that. First one's always the worst. rust in there. So there must be a bit of rust in the tank then. Place to get all the ceiling surfaces pretty clean before we put them back together. Otherwise they can leak. Loosen that centre nut, so um, the fuel should come out of there now when it fills that first bowl up. There we go, see the air bubbles coming out. We want to keep going till all the air is out of there. That's the first filter changed. I thought I had another um, another one of these filters, but I don't, so I'll have to order another one and put that in when it gets here, but that'll be all right for now. It's half full of rust by the look of it. Oh look at that, there's a big rust plug in there. She might run a bit better after this. I wonder if it was getting any fuel at all. See there's a wee bit of a hole there. Let's see if I can solder that up. It's got it. Another little hole there. sort of brass niche. It's good. That'll do me. Give 
all the air out of there. That's it, so that's all the air flushed out. Now we'll tighten it up. Make sure it's not leaking. bit of gunk on it but uh, nothing like I expected considering it hasn't been changed for 15 plus years it's not too bad but that's a reusable filter it's um I think it's a brass fine brass mesh so once that's all clean I'll be able to reuse it Tank a bit of a clean up. I doubt there's some sediment down there. There's like a very fine sort of gunk in the bottom. It's not too bad though. I suppose it's not really a high flow machine like an excavator, so there's nowhere near the amount of um, fluid going through it. Hydraulic oil is at the right level now. So there's two taps, a minimum and a maximum. So you got to, you want to get it somewhere between there, probably just on just on the maximum because uh, there are a few leaking rams, so uh, that'll give me a bit of leeway. 